Hey, it's the Fort Worth Playboy. And my Playboy's Bunny. Welcome to our podcast where we discuss pickup, game, relationships, and... Sex, sex, sex. Long distance relationships, if you insist. <laughs> our, our pat answer on long distance relationships are don't do it. Yeah. It's not actually a relationship. It's a bad idea. It very rarely, if ever, works out. The exceptions prove the rule that it's going to fail. Yes. What are the exceptions? The number one exception is if you have already been dating for some time, and I mean a year or two or three, Yeah. you guys are headed towards marriage, but let's say she has to go to medical school or you have to go away for engineering school and she's going to stay home. You know, you can have... Military deployment. Yeah. If you have a definitive in time yeah and they plan to reunite and then move forward with your relationship that is when a long distance relationship is a basically a relationship that you're managing by long distance you know, yeah time. yeah but the i met her while i was in valley yeah she lives in new york i live in texas you know <laughs> that you don't really know her these right. are the ones that we deal with you don't really know her um you want to get to know her and you guys clicked but, you know, there's even guys that, like, not slept with the girl. And they're trying to, like, romance them from, Oh, know. yeah. Yeah, it happens all the time. Oh, yeah. It's very romantic. It it has a failure rate of 100%. Seriously. Um, it only works in romantic comedies. It just doesn't work on the ground. But you would be you would be amazed at the number of consults I've done where they go, I know, I know, I shouldn't be trying this. <laughs> but I'm going to do it anyway. So, so help talk me through it. So we're going to try to help you, what even was though your we analogy? consider. Okay, <laughs> long distance relationship. It's like you've determined that you're going to pour gasoline over yourself and you're going to light yourself on fire <laughs> because you're going to get burnt. There's a hundred percent chance you're going to get burnt. There's a ninety nine point yeah. nine eight percent chance but you're going to get. We burned. don't want you to die in the process. Yeah. We want you to have a higher survival rate. So yeah. we're going to show you how to do this. And hopefully come out unscathed. Yeah. We're going to say at least best practices if you insist on doing this. <laughs> I would say, I would say number one is you have to understand that long distance relationships <clears throat> are quite often operate under kind of a constant state of vacation mode. So when you see one another, if you, even if you get together, let's say once a month on over a weekend, you're in vacation mode. Everyone is on their absolute best behavior. You don't really see any real side of anyone. Everyone's bringing their best stuff. Um, you're spending money, you're, you're dressing up, you're going out, you're really putting forth a lot of effort. She's really putting forth a lot of effort. This is a good thing. I mean, that's good, but you don't actually get to know the person at all in this mode. I would say the best case scenario for long distance relationships as far as spending time together is even if the the visits are have to be a little fewer and far between, I would say spend at least a week together at a time. So maybe you only, you know, and really, in this day and age, there is more remote work. There is more, you know, like uh, kind of email jobs, internet jobs, things of that nature where you can travel more, you can work from remote locations more easily. So this is a lot more feasible than it was even a decade ago. Um, but even if you can only see one another once a quarter, once every two months, spend at least a week together and don't make it at a resort make it at one of your homes you know one of you come to the other and spend real life time together and over time i mean if you guys decide to be in a relationship whoever is at home if they have to go to work you just continue to go to work yeah you run a normal schedule it works best if you can keep life as normal as possible that's, that's a good point that's when you start kind of like the rubber meets the road in the beginning, you know, we always say, like, you're probably going to have to see each other at least once a month to, yeah. keep, to keep the spark alive. I tell guys, make her come to you. Yeah. The vast majority of time, you know. 
um, it seems to work best. You're on your ground. Um, and girls are used to kind of like adapting to whatever circumstances they're in. However, they have kids. If she has kids, yeah. which if you're over 20, she probably does. Yeah. I mean, seriously, there then that's kind of a, a, a non-negotiable. Yeah. It just depends. A lot of it depends. But these are best practices in what, yeah. what we've seen. But you need to see each other regularly. And let's say, how do you frame it? What does it work best for guys? Is if she's part of a rotation and just part of... Yeah. You see her on weekends and you have girlfriends at home also. Not all girls will sign off on that, but some girls, it fits their need. Yeah. You know, remember, you can... You know, if she's just been through a divorce, she just wants to have a good time. She's sick of the guys in her in her community. Yeah. You know, it gives her a chance to get on a plane and go have a good time. Right. And her friends don't need to know that she's she's naked in a hotel room the whole time. Yeah. You know, I mean, it, you can have a casual, no strings attached, without serious, you know, long distance relationship. It's still but a that's relationship. not a relationship. Yeah. I mean, I will say you're actually kind of talking about something that we say is not a relationship. Right. I guess you know it's, what I mean? a, it's a type of, I mean, a lot of these might be better framed to start that way because they're, they're not together seriously, but they want to feel each other out. Yeah. You know, and I think that's the trepidatious part. And it's up to you. I mean, I always tell guys until like you guys have the talk or you guys make a commitment. Sure. You know, definitely like, because that's where the pressure really starts, I think. Mm-hmm. And the breakdowns start to occur when you guys start relying on each other for the relationship stuff. Yeah. But there's really no one there. Yeah. And it's hard on everyone. It is. I think it's harder on girls, but they don't voice their concerns. Because girls want a guy that's right there. Yeah. I would imagine. It's Yeah, it's hard. It's yeah. hard. Because you'll get a lot of, like, the kind of crying, tear-filled... You know, you know, I, I wanted you, but you weren't here. You know, that kind of, yeah. that phrase tends to come up a lot in long, in long distance relationship kind of attempts. Um, one is definitely have a definitive schedule when you're going to see each other. Yeah. You know, log it out, you know, or plan it out. That way, you know, exactly. instead of like, then you fly home and you guys don't know when you're going to see each other again. Exactly. Two, I would say consistent communication, usually at the same times yeah. each day. I mean, you got to have a, a touch point um, and, and utilize technology, utilize FaceTime, see each other. Um, and that's, that's, is just a good base practice. Yes. You know, is being able to, to, especially if you tend to get busy at work and you only have like a certain, you know, uh, what would you say, window during your day. That you can talk to each other. Yeah. Instead of instead of leaving it up to chance and hurt feelings. Right. Everything that's long distance gets amplified. I it didn't definitely hear, does. I didn't hear from him. I know he's fucking somebody else. Right. Yeah, she hasn't she hasn't called me in two days. Yeah. You know, you start reading into things and it has nothing to do with anything. It's normal life. Exactly. And I will say, I mean, you know, this is kind of where long distance stuff is where dread is not a great idea. Mm-hmm. Like, so the things that we've talked about with like instilling dread in the relationship, it's, this is where predictability actually works in your favor. So you talk every morning at 745 when you get in the car and in your your 45 minute commute, you call her. Or every single night at 430 when she starts making dinner for the for her kids, you know, she calls you. Every day, you have this schedule, and it actually helps keep everything in line. You know that on the weekends, you have a little bit different schedule, maybe. Or you know that, hey, babe, I'm, I'm actually not going straight to the office this morning, so I'm not going to be on the road until 8.15 today, um, so I'll call you then. Communication is, is absolutely the prime way that you stay connected in a long distance relationship. And, and like Fort Worth is saying, if, if that falls off, then there's immediate like dumpster fires. I mean, it, it just, 
and, and a lot of times it's for no reason. Yeah, you've got to you've got to communicate more yeah. than you would in per- and it's very much not game game based. No. You know, but again, game tells you don't do it. Yeah. You know, so <laughs> yeah. you don't really have any like You've thrown game no, out the yeah, window, let's face like, it. You've really yeah, you've really kind of closed the book on that <laughs> for a little while. Um and then when you're in person, you can tease yeah. her more. You can yeah. have more fun with her. She likes your personality her. Yeah. as it is. Yeah. But there's a lot of unknowns. And so you have to have some certainty, yeah. you know, about your your um, communication. And then a third thing would be, like, sex is going to be over the top, but always make it a priority when you guys are together. Yes. Don't, like, not plan. I mean, when I say plan, I mean just go, you know, we're gonna I'm going to pick her up at the airport. We're going straight to the house. Yeah. You know, I mean, and nobody's there. Yeah. That way you're not like taking her from there to dinner with your parents and you know. Right. I mean, make it a priority and keep it front and center, especially when you guys can be around each other. Exactly. Make time for it. Well, and that also sets the stage for if and when this ever progresses into something in person, you know, that where where you're together all the time. It sets the it sets the stage that sex is a priority in this relationship. And even though we're together all the time, we're still we're still gonna fuck because that's what differentiates our relationship from any re- other relationship we have. Yeah, you guys should not be. Uh, she should definitely. It shouldn't be an afterthought. No. So make no. it a priority. And leading up to leading up to your meetup, you know, leading up to being able to see one another, make sure that sexy talk happens. You know, make sure that. I hope you're wearing lingerie on the the. Um, you know, airplane today because I'm going to rip your clothes off as soon as we walk in the door. You know, things of that nature that keep it hot and sexual because otherwise you've just got a pen pal. One, the fourth thing I would say, and this is for the guys. Yeah. Is the first couple days after she's, you guys have been together, expect her to be kind of either ambivalent or kind of hard to get a hold of. Because girls are like re-examining their Mm -hmm. everything after they've been around you. Absolutely. It doesn't mean anything's going to change, but she's not going to be, she's not, guys are like rebound quickly. You know what I mean? She's going to be like, well, what did this mean? What What did he mean by this? Yeah. His next door neighbor, they seemed awful familiar to each other. Yeah. You know, then she'll forget about all this. Yeah. But, you know, she may be a little more distant. Two, three days after you guys are together, don't put any weight into it. No. If she wants to put some weight into it, you know, you decide how you want to respond. And understand that is that is as much a hormonal dump as anything. It's yeah. it's a combination of travel fatigue, whether you travel to her or she traveled to you, she put a lot of a lot of energy into that, let's say, week together. Um and it's the hormonal kind of crash after being on this high with you and then, you know, you leave. And so it's it's really not two, and it is two to three days, like clockwork, every single fucking time. You, you will leave or she will leave. A few days later, she will kind of be down. She'll kind of be depressed. She'll kind of be re-examining things. She'll kind of... Be tearful. She'll kind of want to be argumentative. She'll kind of want to re-examine things a little bit. Or like like you were saying, nitpick things a little bit. Put no weight in this whatsoever. Don't remember anything that she says during that time. It does not matter. Literally, in another two days, it will be a completely moot point. Nothing she says will still have any weight. And I mean, this comes from experience. I had a couple like small and then a long distance relationship. And then you almost married a a guy. I sure did. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, so this. Oh, yeah, I forgot. (laughs) No one understands this stuff except those people that have experienced it. Sure. So it, these are the things that you should know about. Again, you know, see each other regularly and have it planned to, uh, Consistent communication at scheduled times. Yeah. Three. What was three? Oh, sex is sex is a focus. Oh yeah yeah yeah. And then fourth is 
um, I'd call it like, what do you call it, like the aftermath or the yeah. afterburn? Yeah. Yeah. It's really, when I tell you, and this is probably, even that, just that fourth thing, most guys don't know it and everything goes to shit. It's true. Because she doesn't know what's going thing will, on. will make or break a relationship. Yeah. yeah. And it happens every time. Every single time. Yeah. So, guys, if you meet a girl in Valley and she lives in New York <laughs> City and you live in Texas... Do what you do in Bali and leave it in Bali. Yeah. And then go back to Texas and do your thing and never think about it. You're just a fond memory. Yeah. But if you insist, <laughs> we wish you a lot of luck. Yes, we do. You we know? do. Um, if you are dealing with this kind of thing, and if you know better but are still going to do it, and if you want to talk to us about it, we both, Fort Worth and I also, all both offer consults and you know sometimes just talking through it and having a game plan solves a lot of the problems that you might run into we we like to think of ourselves as really solution based um, we want you to go forward from our conversation and implement the the, the things that we've come up with and win in life, no matter whether we necessarily agree that it's the best idea for you or not. That's not for us to say. You're the ones with your feet on the ground. But what we hear every single time we do a consult is, who else am I going to talk to about this? You know, my my dad gives terrible advice. He hasn't been out in the dating world in 50 years. My brother is happily married to his high school sweetheart. You know, my buddies. They just want to make sure that I can still go out drinking with them all the time. They don't know any better. That None of them have any clue what to do. They know less than I do. They know less than I do. So, console requests are in the description box down below. It is the best, the be I, I would say far and away, for the six years that I've been doing them, consults are the best way to spend your time and your money to solve the problems that you're dealing with, to, to overcome the challenges because instead of continuing to make costly time and money costly mistakes, you fix the problem and you move on. It's worth every penny right off the bat. And you're always gonna have problems and challenges. Yeah. And when you do long distance relationships, you're asking for <laughs> problems and challenges. And, and again, almost all, you know, really in this realm, in this very specific thing, long distance relationships, there's so many variables. Yeah. A call is almost necessary. It's true. You can recommend books, but there's so many variables. I That's mean, are you so 20? True. Are you 40? Do you have kids? Does she have kids? I mean, how old are they? Are they little kids? Are they big kids? You know, what do you, I mean, what do you each do for work? Exactly. What do you want? Yeah. And what's her history? Do your you parents know? live with you? Yeah. Oh, there's He's, a lot. There's a lot. There's a lot to consider. A lot of it comes down, like we always say, what's the answer? And we say it depends. It depends. It depends. So if you truly are in a long distance relationship, if you really do want it to work, and if you really do want to want a game plan to make sure that you you get to spend the rest of your life maybe with this girl that you are really into, then get on a call with us. Because in all things, we want you to win. If you like this podcast, <clears throat> please like, subscribe, share with your friends, and know that we want you to win. Bye!